Okay, I know I have, like, a bunch of stuff to get over and talk about, but first things first, I really want to give a huge special shout out to a very, very, very dear friend of mine from Horseheads who just recently, you know, got engaged. And for context as to who, I mean, again, you know, I know I, I never name names, but, you know, on the odd chance you are, but, you know, in case you, you want to have an idea, it's actually um a while back when I went to the dairy barn for the first time it opened like this year. I actually ran into this guy and his then girlfriend, now fiance, and it was her first time at the dairy barn as well. And full disclosure about this person, as you guys know, because I know I have told this, told you all this before, my older brother went to Notre Dame and I went to Horseheads. And for, and full disclosure, I wasn't like, you know, petrified, nervous on my first day of high school. If we're really being clear, I was more terrified of middle school than high school. But, you know, it's your first day of high school, and you're going to be nervous no matter what. And I did have that sort of foreboding sense of dread. But as soon as I walked into the choir room on my first day of school, you know, there this guy was, being warm, genuine, friendly, like, I'd say he was the big brother I never had, but I do have a big brother, and, you know, he's cool, but, you know, he wasn't at Horseheads, obviously, so, you know, it's really cool that you got engaged, shout out to you, man, that is so cool, you know, as soon as I heard the news, I was as giddy as a little schoolgirl, or as giddy as Jonah Hill from Gim to the Greek, if you remember that one gif I sent you, but yes. It is very awesome. Now, how about we get into the main event? Happy hump day, everybody. It is, you know, July 10th, you know, 2019, and there is a lot to talk about. So first, let's get into, you know, America's Got Talent, the final part of the auditions. And man, were they definitely something to be, um, you know, definitely something you had to watch, you know. There was the, uh, the, uh, uh, tambourine master from from Japan and it was actually really fun because I mean he can only speak Japanese but I could tell he was speaking Japanese well, probably because he said Tokyo but the actual word for Japan in Japanese is Nippon N-I-P-P-O-N if you're wondering how to spell it in you know English but yes it is he was from you know Japan he was awesome um the uh that one uh, detention gu detention center guard, um, she basically did the song My Way from by uh, Frank Sinatra, but she sang it in Spanish, which, you know, bilingual. Awesome. You know, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, that one acrobatic duo from France, which actually featured an Olympian. So that was a really cool act. Um... The all-female Malumbo group from Argentina, you know, they were they were awesome. You know, girl power to the nth degree, essentially. And, um, you know, I mean, the whole Argentina thing really hit me just simply because way back when I first learned how to speak Spanish in middle school, you know, one of the things I had us learn was all the Spanish-speaking countries and their capitals, and Argentina is one of them. For the record, the uh, capital is Buenos Aires. So, Buenos Aires, Argentina. There we go. Um, yes. The, uh, the Mentalists, which, this was awesome. They got three S's. Simon was... No, wait, they... No, they had... Was it three S's, or... No, I think they had, like... I want to say they had three S's, but the third one came from... No, they had three S's. Simon was a little bit unsure and then the guy convinced him to say yes because of one more trick he showed which okay that was really really cool huh. yeah that's the problem with saying i'd like to watch this i you know i kind of don't get quite enough sleep but you know it's worth it so let's see the um 
the uh that guitars cover of imagine that that was really cool um that hoop aerialist who was a graphic designer you know as a as like a day job i mean don't get me wrong we have seen like i mean the hoop has been featured on you know america's got talent before in fact one of the greatest acts to ever die on the america's got talent stage and she was on america's got talent the champions so i would know this was uh sophie dossie who I do believe actually has a YouTube page. Oh, yeah, she does have a YouTube page because I am subscribed to it. But, um, yes, she, I mean, she was, she done the hoop. But this, but this guy who is actually just a little bit older than I am, he's like 33 or whatever. And he just moved in that hoop with such, like, speed and agility. I'm like, okay, this guy's the real deal. Um, the Vietnam War veteran who, was uh, blind, you know, his performance was, you know, simply captivating, I loved it, the live was great, um, I'm trying to remember what the acts are, the uh, one comedian from Texas, um, okay, I get the whole prop comic thing, but when you literally use, like, burgers and fries as part of your act, you are automatically on, I am automatically on your side, that, 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 that was awesome. And finally, um, the, uh, golden buzzer from Luke Islam, from, uh, you know, Julian Huff, you know, that was wonderful, it was great, you know, that kid is going to easily be a Broadway star, no questions asked, I really hope, you know, he makes it, so, yes, that was awesome. <sighs> okay, so, with that being taken care of, how about we move on to, actually, before I talk about Amphibia, there is a new show that just came out yesterday called Bring the Funny. And I did watch some of it after America's Got Talent, but after, um, but again, it's just on so late. I can only stay up for like so long. It got to the point where, okay, if I, if I stay up any longer, I'm going to fall asleep with the TV on. And I mean, technically no, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's always so embarrassing when, at least for me, it's always embarrassing if, you wake up to something like that. So, you know, I immediately went to bed. For, but from what I saw, it was funny. It was great. And I can't wait to see more. Now, oh, oh, see, I was, you see, I'm, I'm yawning on it. That's how late I was up. But in any case, let's talk about the, um, the, uh, newest episode of Amphibia, which is titled, which is, uh, Snow Day. And Crackling Miss Croker. Now, Snow Day is... Well, that actually was a Nickelodeon movie. It really wasn't very good. Called Snow Day. But when I think of Snow Day, I think of that one Nike commercial that featured, like, all those NFL players and um, and stuff like that. It featured, like, um, Rob Gronkowski, Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham Jr. There was one scene in that commercial where um, someone jumps off the roof into a giant pile. So it was like, Snow Day! You know, I'm going to put a link into that, that link to that commercial in the description, but I really love that commercial. It's a fun commercial. But, um, basically, for, uh, Snow Day, the, uh, Wartwood is, always experiences a, a phenomenon called Hybrid Day, where, you know, they essentially freeze for, you know, an entire day. But the scary thing, which is essentially hibernation, only again, it lasts like a day. But the thing of it is, someone always goes missing. But Anne thinks, hey, you know, I'm warm-blooded. I don't freeze. I can actually watch all of you guys. And, you know, I can make sure nothing goes wrong. And for the most part, that's exactly, you know, what she does. She she watches, you know, everyone. But think of it as when you're the only person in an entire town, you know, you know, sitting around watching everyone, you get bored really easily. So... She thaws out Sprig, and it was very clear that Sprig was thawed a little bit too early because he couldn't speak properly. I think he was still under the effects of, you know, the cold air, which, you know, that, I mean, not that I know how, not that I know all the intricacies of cold-blooded creatures, but sure, why not? And it turns out that, um, you know, in playing around with everyone and stuff like that when she was bored, you know, uh, Polly ended up getting missing, and it turns out that 
what's been taking everyone from Wartwood was a giant weasel. But not without reason, because, you know, the giant weasel was a mother. You know, she had to feed food, feed, you know, had to, you, have, you have to give your kids something. But it's a callback to earlier in the episode, because Anne actually made omelets for Hop, Hop, and Polly, which, okay, as someone who knows how to make omelets myself, I have to say, that was awesome. You know, if you guys have seen my Instagram, you know I can make a pretty decent omelet as well. Um, which you should totally check out, by the way. Um... So, you know, she actually gives her, gives the, Anne actually gives the giant weasel, you know, the omelet that she saved from earlier, and, you know, she ate it, and, you know, she let Polly go, and everything was right, and, you know, eventually everyone thaws out, Anne confessed, okay, listen, I screwed up, I should not have done that, you know, we can, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a protector at all, so, yeah, but then, you know, they forgave her, because, you know, admitting that, you know, you did that, prove just how responsible you really are. Although, one thing I do have to point out in the episode is, if you've seen Anne's design, you know that she has one shoe on her foot and the other shoe is missing. In the Snow Day episode, she's wearing a hat, she's wearing a jacket, you know, to stay warm, but she's still wearing, like, the one shoe and the pair of socks. <laughs> it just got me. It really did. I'm like, how is she not, like, how are her feet not, like, frozen or something? I don't know. And then the next episode is, um, Cracking Miss Croker. Now, Sprig is very well liked, you know, by everyone. But for whatever reason, Miss Croker doesn't really like him. It's basically the kind of episode where, you know, you're not really going to be able to please everyone for, you know, something about... You're going to run to that one person where something about... Uh, I mean, like, this happens in real life, too. You know, we all run into that one person who, for whatever reason, just does not like you. You don't do anything wrong. You don't, you, you are very well-meaning. You do pretty much everything that, you know, you could do in terms of being a nice person. But for whatever reason, they don't like you. And you know, the lesson is you're not going to be able to please everyone. And, you know, that's fine. But Sprig actually takes it a little bit too far. To the point where he accidentally gets an assassin to find to find Miss Croker, and there's like an epic fight scene or whatever, and it was like awesome. But um, the way Sprig finds out about this assassin, well, he didn't know it was an assassin, but he sneaks into her place, and this was actually the funniest part of the episode. He sneaks into her place and finds. You know, old pictures of Miss Croker and, you know, Ann and Polly try and stop her. Sprig goes to find, uh, this assassin. His name is Jonah. And Ann's like, you want to look at, you want to stay and look at more pictures of hot Miss Croker? And then Polly's like, you read my mind! <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was, that, that, that was, that was pretty good. Man, they're giving Polly, like, all the best, like, quips in these episodes. I love that. It's awesome. So, yeah, again, the the bottom line for this particular episode is, you know, you're not going to be able to please everyone, you know, you know, I make videos every day, and it's very clear that not everyone watches them, and you know, that's okay, you know, it's, 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 it's totally, totally cool. Um, although, one thing I did forget to mention yesterday, I'm so upset at myself for not mentioning this yesterday, at the uh, Trip to the Archives episode... You know, the best line, no kidding, is when Anne said, Zoo Books and Manga, here I come! I'm like, yes, 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 that's exactly what I want to hear. I mean, yeah, I mean, personally, I read the One Piece manga, as you guys know. Although that does lead into something I might do. But, um, with that said, I mean, not everyone reads manga, but I haven't found a soul who doesn't like zoo books. Zoo books are awesome. I mean, it features, you know, cute animals. Some some dangerous animals, but also really cute animals. And, you know, that's awesome. Man, zoo... I remember when zoo books was popular when I was a kid. And now I just realized that I am old. <laughs> not too old. Like, yeah, I know I'm an older guy, but, you know, it's not... But I'm not going to let that get me down, because age really is a number. You know, it's not how, it's not how old you are, it's how you are being old. And... Yes, it is a little weird that I am a grown man watching, essentially, a kid's cartoon and talking about it on camera to all of you, but I don't care. That's how awesome this 
cartoon is. I'm really glad I'm sticking by this. And with six episodes to go, I can't wait to see how the season ends. Like, favorite, share. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me on the social media platforms. I am home that I made this video for all of you guys who are watching Joy for today. I'm hopeful we all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, hump day. I almost forgot what day it was. And remember, for the videos on my talking channel, I'm always going to be here to London here. And I'll always have your back. Take care and make good choices.